everybody. How are you? Joey Image here with another podcast for you. And I know uh, you are uh, noticing something different right off the bat. There's no intro. Uh, That's because I'm not at home. I'm actually driving to South Jersey for the Big Geek Fest convention tomorrow morning in uh, Woodbury Heights, I think it's called. So I figured I forgot to do a podcast this week. Uh, Well, I forgot on my normal night, which is Tuesday night, and then Wednesday night I just didn't have time. Um, As most of you guys know, I'm moving in a couple of weeks, so I was packing to move. Uh, I hope you can hear me, actually. I got a little bit of music playing in the background. Um, So I'm I'm not home right now. I'm driving. I didn't have time this week to do uh, an episode. I know I said last week that I'd be doing, like, bi-weekly podcasts, but I think I'm going to change that. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just whenever I feel like it, I will do an episode until I am moved in and settled into my new uh, office. So... I think for now, I mean, it might be every other week, I don't know, but we'll see what happens. This week I had a urge to do one, I had some stuff to talk about, and again, I didn't get a chance to do it. So, and you may hear like the sounds of the, the sounds of driving your wind in the background, and uh, I apologize, I keep my windows closed as much as possible while I do this, but uh, it's not really that cold out anymore, it's sort of warm in here. I mean, I got AC, but I don't want to put that on and have that blowing into the microphone either so I just hope this sounds okay and if it doesn't well I apologize I won't find out until it uploads actually so my dilemma with this and how I'm even doing this is because I've got a microphone I spent like ten dollars on this little microphone I think it's called PM10 it, it's just a standard 3.5 millimeter jack um, I'm sorry standard 3.5 millimeter connector that plugs into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the iPhone and it records audio that way. So basically I've got the microphone plugged in. It's clipped onto my seatbelt here as I go through the uh, Easy Pass, which is a rip off. Um, it's clipped onto my seatbelt here and uh, that's how I'm yapping to y'all. Uh, the only, the issue that I don't like is that the SoundCloud app, SoundCloud.com is where all my episodes are hosted. But what I don't like about the SoundCloud app for iPhone is that it doesn't allow you to record. It's basically just a podcast listening app I guess so because I can't record on that I've got another app called uh, audio copy I think it's called those of you podcasters that use SoundCloud this might actually be a little bit uh, helpful to you I believe the Android SoundCloud app you actually can record and then upload directly to your SoundCloud account for your RSS feed for iTunes or whatever you do you're podcasting with Uh, for me again I have an iPhone it doesn't have that option so I have to use another app called Audio Copy and record in, into that and then transfer from that into the SoundCloud account, which, I mean, is easy. You just put your account info into Audio Copy and it uploads it automatically. And then once you do that, it goes through, you know, through your RSS link or your RSS feed into whatever you use, Podbean or, you know, Podomatic. I use iTunes. Uh, so it's kind of a hassle, but once you get both, you don't even need the SoundCloud app really. Once you get the audio copy app and you get it all configured for your SoundCloud account and whatever you want in your default uploads, like your tags or anything like that, then you're good to go. So, oh, by the way, this is episode 37, I believe. So, once you get all that stuff set up in, in audio copy, you're essentially good to go. It's just, uh, it is a pain in the ass, but you know, for stuff like this, where I'm kind of like on the road and on the go, it, it works. So, that's why there's no intro music this week, there will be no outro music, no bumpers, no nothing, just raw, no editing either, just raw me yapping. If I uh, forget a thought, or if there's a little bit of dead air, blank space, whatever, you'll at least hear a little bit of music in the background. I don't know if you can hear that, if it's too loud or what, but there it was, a little bit of music right there for you. So, how the hell is everybody? What are you all doing? So, what I was going to talk about this week is basically just my truck, I guess. This probably won't be that long, by the way. But uh, I sold my truck the other day. I don't know if um, any of you guys even knew I had a truck for sale. Some people saw it on Facebook and said, hey, man, that's a cool truck, blah, blah, blah. But I had a 2005 Chevy Trailblazer that I was absolutely in love with. Uh, it was a V6. had the Vortec V6 engine in it. Um, it was a Trailblazer LT, four-wheel drive. You know, four door, all the jazz, all the all the all the bells and whistles or whatever. Uh, beautiful truck, man. I just was in love with that truck. 
and uh, basically what happened was uh, I got it it was a 2005 I believe um, it was a 2005 but it didn't sell for like a little over a year so you know like cars for whatever year they come out the previous year at the end of the year so for example now it's 2016 so the 2016 car models came out in whatever September October of 2015 you know usually a couple months ahead a months early so this truck was a 2005 so obviously it came out at the end of 2004 but sat there and no one bought it for like a year and a half she was the only one left in the parking lot or I'm sorry the dealer's lot the only one nobody wanted it and uh, finally about February of 2006 somebody a woman got it and it was a three-year lease so I got it in February of 2009 so the three years were up she brought it back it was in perfect condition 34 or I'm sorry yeah 34 I'm sorry 32,000 miles on it like 34 32,300 something like that and everything was fine nothing wrong with it beautiful truck in great shape uh, so essentially what happened was uh, I, I saw a white it's in fact it's still around the corner from where my parents live there's a neighbor around the corner who's got a white trailblazer I don't know what year but same body style so I'm assuming 05 06 whatever it was um, and I I've seen it a million times because it's right around the corner from my parents house and I think it's beautiful I really really love that truck I've seen it driving around town always thought really really nice looking truck and if I could uh, help it I'd like to get me one of those one day so I used to drive a little black Chevy Lumina some of you uh, wrestlers and wrestling fans may have seen it it was a little black Chevy New Jersey plates and it said joeyimage.com on the back window back when I had my website so that car eventually died uh, the transmission blew and I just couldn't afford to have it fixed or replaced it really it didn't even have a lot of mileage it only had I think a hundred and twenty something thousand miles on it uh, I just couldn't afford it and my uh, my father was actually in the market for a new truck he drove a blue Chevy Equinox which I, I own and I drive now so he had the Chevy Equinox 2006 and he wanted a new truck uh, he wanted a new Equinox so basically what happened was he waited to get his new one drove this Equinox for a couple of years when that when my car died my Chevy Lumina died he was thinking well I'll just buy the new car that I want and I'll give you the blue one you know the blue Equinox and I'm like, oh, you know, I don't really like this car very much, but whatever, hey, it's a free car. So he said, well, what do you want? He said, how about this? How about I'll buy you a car. We keep the Equinox around just in case, you know, one of us needs a car, something happens. Uh, my car, my father's car, or my mother's car is in the shop one day maybe, and someone needs a car to use. So we figured, all right, we'll just do that then. We'll, we'll get me at something new, and we'll keep the Equinox that we have now. And he'll get his new Equinox. So that's it. that's basically what ended up happening. So I told him I wanted the Chevy Trailblazer. I showed him the one I liked, the white one from around the corner. Went to a bunch of dealerships. He said, he goes, you know what? I can only really afford like 7000 So either we get something for 7000 or less and I'll buy it for you. Or we put our money together. You know, you, you have seven grand, or I'm sorry, he, my father has seven grand. And then I put in whatever I can afford, and we get something for whatever that is. So at the time, I was paying rent. I was living with a roommate who was late on the rent every single month, literally every month. He wasn't working. So uh, he had a really good job when, we, when he first moved in. Him and his girlfriend, when they first moved in, he had a good job. But that didn't last. And uh, he eventually lost his job. The girl left. She moved out. They split up. So it was, it was really rough, and like I said, the rent was late every single month, and because the lease was in my name, I always paid the late fees. He would help me out with the late fees once in a while, but he was doing bad as it is, and wasn't looking for a new job either. He was just paying his rent based on his unemployment checks, which didn't work out. So there were times where we would pay 100 bucks, $150 a month in just in late fees because of the, the, the deadbeat I was living with. So basically what happened was I told my father like look I can't really afford anything you know I'm not doing that great as it is so why don't we just do 7,000 or you know or less if we can find it he said all right we looked around a whole bunch of uh, uh, Chevy dealerships 
we didn't see anything that was under like 13 grand. So I was like, you know what? We're, we're not going to find nothing. Why don't you just buy your new truck and, and I'll just take the Equinox you have now, the blue one. You know, forget it. It's all right. I mean, you know, I, I already appreciate the, the gesture of him offering to buy me something. And I feel like it's my dad. It's, you know, it's my father. Like, I really, we really haven't, we don't get along very well. I shouldn't say that. When we, uh, we're together, we argue a lot. But, you know, deep down, I love him. He's my dad and he loves me. But I still, I felt like, <coughs> excuse me. I felt like it's not my, not his responsibility to get me a new car even though you offered. So we didn't find anything in the price range, so I said, forget it, it's fine. Don't worry about it. That was a Friday. The last time that we looked was a Saturday, and uh, that Saturday, I was like, forget it, you know, don't worry about it. We never found anything. We looked, we had looked a whole, for a whole week. From, well, not a whole week. We looked from Monday through Saturday. Finally, when I gave up, I, drove, I actually drove his Blue Equinox for a couple of days. He hadn't gotten his new one yet, but my dad's old. He doesn't do anything anyway. He doesn't really leave the house. Like he goes to he'll he'll go shop. Like he'll go food shopping maybe once a week. And when he goes uh, on vacation to Florida, my family owns a owns a home in Florida. He'll go down there for a few weeks. But he doesn't really do anything other than that. So he doesn't really need um, a truck. Well, he doesn't really need a car like full time. He's cool with only uh, you know driving a couple times a week and that's it. So I took his Equinox for a little while until he got his new one, but oh, well, that was the plan. So again, we stopped looking on a Saturday. That uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So three days later on Tuesday, there was a, I got a phone call at my day job. I had a day job for a little while. I was a temp in an office. So I got a phone call from this guy, Tom, or Tim. Tom, Tim, one of those. I think it was Tom. So he goes, Hey, is this Joe? So I go, uh, yes. He's like, this is Tom from All American Ford in Hackensack, New Jersey. So in my head, I'm thinking, well, did we look at something there? I don't remember it. And he wants to, because I did look at, at a really nice Ford Explorer too, but it needed like $9,000 worth of work that I didn't know about until my mechanic looked at it. So I thought, well, maybe this guy's calling me back trying to get me to buy this Explorer. So I was like, uh, this is Joe, yeah. And also I'm thinking, well, we were looking at Trailblazers. This is a Ford dealership calling me, so that's not the, you know, not the same thing. So he goes, well, you're now the proud owner of a 2005 Chevy Trailblazer. And I go, uh, excuse me? He goes, you're now the proud owner of a 2005 Chevy Trailblazer. And I said, but you just called me from a Ford dealership. Why would you have a Chevy Trailblazer? And he says, well, we're All-American Ford, but we also own All-American Chevy, which is right across the street and down the road in Hackensack. So I'm like, so what do you mean I own a Trailblazer? I, I didn't look at any. At least I didn't look at any there. I looked at the Explorer the other day. And he goes, well, I'm here with your father. Maybe you should talk to him. So I'm like, okay. So my father gets on the phone. And he goes, hey, buddy, I just bought you a truck. So I go, holy shit, are you serious? So it turns out my father bought, found a trailblazer that he liked, that he thought was a good deal. And again, like I said, I had my mechanic, our mechanic, the family mechanic. My father's been going to the same mechanic for over 40 years, or close to 40 years now, I should say. And um, we felt, he felt like it was a good deal. It was good enough to buy on the spot. Didn't even have my mechanic look at it. So for my father to buy any used car and not have our mechanic look at it, is a big deal. It may not sound like anything to those of you listening to this, but trust me, my father, that's a big deal. So he didn't didn't have that done, didn't have it looked at, nothing. Just went down there, checked it out, he drove it a little bit, took it for a test drive, liked it, 32,000 miles, and he paid for it, bought it outright cash on the spot. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. So he goes, yep, I need you to come down here as soon as you get out of work. And I got out of work at the time of 5.30. This is close to 4, 4.30, I think. 4.30ish, I believe. So I got out of work, 5.30, went right to the dealership. My father was already there, of course. And uh, what happened was my mother and him drove there together so one of them could drive the Equinox home and I could take the, the new Trailblazer. 
So I get there, and basically what happened was it was more than what his, uh, you know, um, limit was. I guess you call it. His limit was seven thousand, as I said, or his price range was seven thousand. The car, the truck, the Trailblazer was twelve thousand five hundred. So I, I, the first thing I said was, "Man, if you told me all along that you were cool with twelve five, I would have looked at more trucks." Or there's like three that we could have bought already, just from looking at them. And he goes, well, I really couldn't afford that, but I found this, and it's in great shape. And it's got barely, you know, barely any miles on it, only 30,000 miles, so it's barely broken in. It was a lease, it's only had one owner, and, uh, well, one, you know, one lessee, one, one person driving it. And he's like, it's just in great shape, and I feel like, you know, it's a, it's a good buy. And I know you want it, so here you go, it's, it's yours, I love you. And I was like, I was like almost in tears. Like my, my father, my father is a Marine, oh, <laughs> I should say ex-Marine, because he's no longer in the military, but you, you military guys will know, once a Marine, always a Marine, there's no such thing as an ex-Marine. So, my father's 100% Italian Marine from Brooklyn. In the 50s and 60s he grew up. So, you know, he's a, kind of a hard ass. So, for him to buy me something that was more than like, you know, 50 bucks, <laughs> especially a, tr you know, a brand new car, or not brand new car, I'm sorry, especially a new car, new to me at least, without even having it looked at by our family mechanic, is a really, really big deal. So I was, of course, taken back by that. I was super, super appreciative and, and uh, you know, grateful. I thanked him a million times. I mean, I, I thanked him a thousand times. Still, I have. So now that I sold it, I still even thanked him the other day for buying it for me in the first place. But I loved that truck, man. I drove that thing everywhere. That thing, like I said, had 131, 132,000 miles on it when I, er, I'm sorry, 32,000 miles on it when we got it. When I sold it the other day, the other, uh, almost a week ago now, last Saturday, it had 161,000 miles. So I put about 130,000 on it. That's all wrestling trips from here to Florida to, to Pennsylvania to Ohio to Connecticut to New York to, to you know other spots in New Jersey um, Delaware Maryland I mean uh, all a lot of wrestling trips on that a lot of you know a couple Florida trips on there a lot of Seaside Heights <laughs> you know just a lot of driving in uh, well, I got an 09 so what is this, this is 15 so six years I got it in February of 09 and uh, I only drove it until, <coughs> excuse me, I only drove it until 2014, so five years, because what happened with it was uh, a valve burnt out, so number two wasn't firing, valve number two was burnt out, so because of that, the check engine light was on, 20, you know, 24-7, path, whatever, you know, perpetually, so because the check engine light was on, it wouldn't pass inspection. So it's like a catch-22. What happened was it wouldn't pass inspection because the light was on. But it was cost too much money to get it fixed, to get the light, you know, to get the uh, valve job fixed, to get the light off. So it, it was at an end, plus, I mean, at 160,000 miles, really kind of wasn't worth it for such high mileage to um, get it fixed. I mean... It, that was like the major thing wrong. There was a couple little things. Um, the windshield was cracked, which I had that replaced once before by our family mechanic, and it cost three hundred dollars. So that's not too bad. The motor in the passenger side window, you know, the motor in the uh, door panel for the window didn't work, so the window didn't go up or down. The air conditioner slash heater didn't work on settings one, two, three, and four. Only five. Um, what else is there? I think that may have been it. So, which doesn't sound like a lot, but in total, to fix all of that would have been around four thousand dollars, with the valve job being about thirty-five hundred alone. So, from what this is what I was told from my my family again, my mechanic, around four grand. So, it was like you know, I mean, it's it would it would have been great to fix all that, and I really do love that truck, but. How do I know, like, when I fix all that, like, something else is going to go wrong? I mean, it was getting old. It wasn't getting old year-wise, but mileage-wise, man, it had, you know, been around the block quite a few times. So I kind of felt like it wasn't really worth it at that high mileage of 161,000 miles 
to even bother fixing it and then hoping that it was okay. It ran great. I mean, it was it ran strong. It started right up, but because of that burnout valve, it would rumble. So even when it idles, it would rumble a little bit and shake. It would always feel like it was going to die, but it never actually stalled out. But again, because of the valve job, the check engine light went on. Because the check engine light went on, it wouldn't pass inspection. Even with the new inspection changes coming up in on May 1st in the state of New Jersey, it still wouldn't it still wouldn't matter because none of those rules applied to me. There's one rule. Actually, there's there's the the, the two new rules are like if your car is a 1995 or older and it has a weight of I think 50 uh, 5,500 pounds and less. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. It's it's if the car is 95 or older and weighs 3,000 pounds or more, you don't need inspection. So you no longer need it. Even if it's failed, it doesn't matter. You don't need it anymore. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if my car fell into that category, it would be great. It wouldn't have needed inspection. Unfortunately, it's newer than 95 and heavier than 3,000 pounds. So the next category was if it's a 2007 or newer and 8,000 pounds or lower, it doesn't need it. So my car was 2005, but it was 5,500 pounds. So it was heavier than 3,000 pounds, which didn't fit, and it was newer than the uh, 1995 car, but older than the 2007 car. So I couldn't do any of it. So none of those rules are actually going to apply to me, which really sucks. Because if that was the case, I would have just kept it and drove it the way it was until it died. I mean, it, I'm sure it would die eventually, of course, but it really wasn't um, unreliable, let's put it that way. Very reliable car. Like I said, started right up, ran real strong, never had a problem with it. I ran it every week, at least once, just for like 20, 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, I don't know, it just, it didn't, just didn't work out in my favor. And I was kind of bummed out about it, too, because, like I said, my father got me that truck, and I love that truck. Um, the night that I sold it, I was already on Craigslist and, uh, I think, eBay. Or, I'm sorry, uh, I was on Craigslist and True Car. There's an app called True Car. Um, it's like a car buying app. It's, a, it's also got, there's also a TrueCar.com. I was on both of those looking for a new one. <laughs> not like a new, not like a brand new, but another Trailblazer. I'll get one eventually. I mean, I really kind of love those those trucks. But, you know, I got time. I'm not in any hurry. I've got this, you know, I'm, I'm now driving the Equinox that my, you know, I talked about earlier, the blue one. So I've got plenty of time. But basically, I put, I listed this truck on Craigslist about six months ago for $1,500. I didn't get one email, not one email. In when, So first of all, let me go back, let me backtrack a little bit. When you list something on Craigslist, they, they keep it listed for 30 days. If you want to delete it, you can go in there and delete it during that time, or you can go in there and edit it. That's fine. But it'll it'll if you leave it alone, just the you know the way you, the way you put it up in the first place, it'll list for 30 days, which is fine with me. I'm thinking, hey, 30 days, that's cool. That's that's enough to sell a car, right? Should be fine. Uh, maybe not because <laughs> the first time I listed it, I didn't get one bit of interest back at all. So I thought, uh, okay, like maybe I'm, uh, you know, asking too much. Uh, I don't know. And my mechanic told me I'm lucky if I get $1,500. And then somebody else told me, another guy, uh, my friend Mike's mechanic told me, I probably couldn't get much more than $1,000. So I figured, you know, between the two of those, I'm looking at at least between 1000 thousand and 1500 I should be able to get for this car. For this truck, so I'm like, all right, you know, what? I'm gonna list for 1500. I'll let someone talk me down to like 13 or 1200, whatever. So listed it for a month, didn't get anything at all as far as interest. I did get one guy that emailed me and told me how to fix it, <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm not interested in fixing it. I'm trying to sell it. That's why it's on Craigslist. Like I've already got another car. I don't need to. Uh... <coughs> Excuse me. I don't need to fix it. I would love to fix it. Don't get me wrong, but. You know, it's not um, going to happen. So that guy responded, oh, you know, I'm just, just trying to help. I'm like, well, I understand that, but 
you know, that's not what Craigslist is for uh, on this particular ad. So anyway, long story short, about six months ago, that was, nothing ever happened. So this past, in fact, I sold it last Saturday, which is six days ago from now, and I only listed it on Friday. So Friday morning, I think it was, before I left to go to work, I listed it, I put $1,500, I listed everything that was wrong with it. I even put a video, because I took a video of it a few months ago, listed everything wrong with it. Hey, there's a whole bunch of, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Looks like a flipped over car. Anyway, so I took a, there's a YouTube video of it. I put the ad listing everything that was wrong with it. And I even put the cost of what my mechanic told me it was to fix it. And that was Friday morning. By Friday afternoon, I had five emails. All people interested in it. Which to me was amazing. I was like, whoa, I can't believe this. Six months ago, I didn't get one of these in 30 days. And now I got five in just a matter of hours. So I emailed everybody back, and there was one guy whose name was Serge, Sergio, or Sergey, I think his name was, Sergey, S-E-R-G-E-Y, Sergey. And he was like, right off the bat, hey, what can I come look at it? I'm interested. I'll probably buy it on the spot. I'm like, whoa, 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 okay. So this guy, like he, like, at first I thought it was kind of like, not spammy, but I thought it was kind of odd that he was like willing to take it right off my hands, like right on the spot, you know? But it, it, I mean, I don't have a lot of experience on cars. I sold one car in the past. It was my ex-girlfriend's car. And uh, I mean, actually she did it. She went through the whole process. I just kind of was there watching. But I just thought it was odd. So this guy was like, I'll take it right on the spot. I'll come down and buy it tomorrow. Blah, blah, blah. Like, all right, fine. So I told this guy, like, look, you can come down tomorrow and check it out. He's like, all right, I want to come look at it at whatever time. So he couldn't make it. The first time he told me was, I'll be there around 1.30. This was Saturday. Now, my girlfriend and I were going to see Batman vs. Superman at 3 o'clock. So I'm thinking, like, 1.30, like, this dude, I want to get to the theater by, like, 2.30 to get a decent seat because I figured it's going to be pretty packed, which it was, but we still got a good seat. We got there nice and early. So I'm thinking, this guy's going to get here at 1.30. He's going to bust my chops for an hour, and I'm not going to get to the movies on time. So I'm like, well, you know, whatever. I told him, okay, it's fine. So then... He, he texts me around 1, and he goes, uh, I can't make it at 1.30. It's going to have to be later. So right away, I'm thinking, all right, well, this guy is not uh, on the up and up. You know what I mean? There's something going on. So I, I thought that he was just bullshitting me and, like, kind of not, not, not necessarily scamming me, but decided maybe he didn't want it and just didn't want to say that. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to the movies at 3.00. I probably won't be home until, you know, four or five, I mean, sorry, I'm going to the movie to three, it's two, it's a, an hour and a half, I think it is, or a two hour movie, something like that, so I'm not going to be home, I told him, you know what, by the time I get home and get settled and, and maybe eat something over, it'll be about seven, so why don't you come by around seven o'clock, he goes, okay, that's fine, gave him my address, so seven o'clock it is, like, all right, that's cool, so then, I'm, I leave the movie theater around 6-ish, uh, 6.15. The movie wasn't actually until 3.30. I thought it was 3. So I move, I leave around 4, um, I guess around 6, 6.15. Around 6.30, I'm on my way home. I'm very close to my house. I mean, the movie theater is only about 15 minutes away. I'm on my way home, and the guy texts me. Hey, I'm here. I'm like, oh, shit, it's, uh, it's only 6.30. He told me 7. So he's there early. I go, okay, well, the truck's right outside of my house if you want to look at it. It's not locked. I mean, I'm sorry. It's unlocked. Fuck. It's locked. So you can't really get into it, but I'll be home in five minutes. I'm only about a mile or two away. So he says, okay. So I get there. He's there with his wife and kid or whatever, looking at the car or whatever. Long story short, he likes it. He wants it. He's, he wants to buy it and send it to DR, which is the Dominican Republic. And I thought of George Costanza right now because he told me he's an importer-exporter. <laughs> I giggled because Art Vandoy was an importer-exporter of latex. So this guy's an importer-exporter of cars. We, he, he imports and exports between the United States and the Dominican Republic. 
So he goes, hey, you ever go on vacation in the DR? You might see this car driving around. So I go, all right, you know, he had cash on him. I'm like, all right, so he goes, well, your ad said $1,500. And I said, yep, 1500 bucks. He's like, I can give you like maybe an even thousand. So I go, well, 1500 So he goes, I can maybe do 1100 bucks. And I go, maybe $1,400. So he's like, I can do maybe 12. Now keep in mind, I absolutely love this truck and did not, not at all, did not want to get rid of it. So he goes, and the last offer for me was uh, 14. He goes, I can do 1200. That's my final offer, $1200 cash right now. So I go, let me see the money. So he takes out a lot of hundreds. He had a lot more than 1200 bucks there. And I go, all right, here's what we're going to do. I will agree to 1200 bucks if you let me drive it around the corner one more time. Now, I mean, it's not the car's not registered or insured because it's been off the road for two years. But he's got a friend that owns a mechanic shop. So I know some mechanics myself that have generic insurance and registration forms. They're not made out to any type of vehicle. They're just made out to the shop itself. And they're just for this particular reason. If the, if the shop or the junkyard or the mechanic or what have you wants to buy something that's not registered or insured, they can use these dummy plates and uh, registration insurance just to get it to where it's to its destination until they can fix it and get it legally registered or insured. They're like temporary plates or whatever, sort of. So we had each of those. He had temporary insurance. Oh, I'm sorry. He had uh, the, the shop insurance and the shop license plates. So I go, all right, 1200 bucks, and you let me drive it one last time. So he goes, you want to drive it one more time? I go, absolutely. So he's like, all right, deal. So we shook on it. <laughs> we got in. He gave me $1,200 cash. I drove around the block a couple times, said my goodbyes, and uh, he took it. And a lot of you saw that video on my Facebook last week and my YouTube of the car actually being driven away from my house. Uh, and when, when, when I say that I, I missed that car and I was really, really sad to see it go, I know that sounds silly to some people because it sounds silly to me. Like, it's just a fucking car, man. Like, it's a car. It's, it's literally a machine. I already have, you know, I have another one. But I think that the, just the fact that, like I said, like, my father doesn't do stuff like that. He doesn't do stuff like that for anyone, whether he loves you or he doesn't. He doesn't tell you, I can spend this much money on you, and, and then he goes out and spends almost twice as much, you know, because he cares about you. He just doesn't do stuff like that. He, he shows, you know, he doesn't show emotion a lot. He's not, he's not a, a, and I love you kind of, I'll give you a hug kind of guy, but he is a, uh, you know, he's a very caring dude. He just doesn't show it. Uh, not, doesn't outwardly show it. So, again, it was very odd for him to do that, and to me... That makes the truck very, very sentimental, and I absolutely love that truck, and uh, I'm really, really sad that it's gone, but I will have another one one day, I promise that, and, uh, you know, I think it's awesome, I think it's a great truck still, and, um, you know, I got some cool pictures of it, got some cool video of it, uh, I took a video, I guess, probably about six months ago, that video that showed everything wrong, I, I took that when I listed it the first time. And I actually still have that $1,200 because, you know, here's another funny thing about how sentimental it is to me. I don't give a shit about the money. I just want the truck. And I know, obviously, I'm not going to get it back. It's probably in DR already by now. But, you know, I know I'm not going to get it back and driving is not an option anyway and I can't legally drive it and blah, blah, blah. But just the fact that I am a, I am a guy whose pockets are have holes in them burned for money. <laughs> I mean, lately I've been good. The last uh, last year or two I've been good saving. But there was a time where a dollar would not last 10 minutes in my pocket. So for me to still have this $1,200 cash in my hand, in my wallet, a week later is, is kind of like, you know, <laughs> it's astronomical, the odds of that happening. But apparently the odds are pretty good now because that's what happened. So I hope somebody in DR, if you're looking, uh, if you're in the market for a trailblazer, I hope you get mine, and I hope it treats you well, just as good as it treated me. Like I said, 
That car's been all up and down the East Coast, and uh, you know I loved it, man, and I still love it, man. That car treated me great. So I think that's enough for tonight. <laughs> Again, no intros, no outros, just a little bit of music in the background while I yap and yap and yap. I'm sure this was probably a very boring episode, but. listen to this episode it's been an odd one like I said I'm still driving I still got about another hour drive to go so I'm gonna let you all off right here it is uh, about 10 30 p.m. Friday night April 1st and uh, please follow me on Twitter at Joey image please follow me on Twitter at Joey image I'm trying to desperately trying to hit 10,000 followers um, also, add me on Facebook, facebook.com slash realjoeyimage. Another website that's very, very important to me, too, actually, youtube.com slash joeyimage. Please subscribe to my channel. I mean, I partially, I don't even care. Part, I should say part of me doesn't even care if you actually watch any of my videos or never get any of my updates. As long as you subscribe, I'm okay with that. The numbers are what I need. Also, prowrestlingtees.com slash Joey Image. Please go on there. Please buy a t-shirt. They're only 20 bucks. There's six ones to choose from. There will be eight soon. I have two more uh, design ideas in mind that hopefully will be uploaded soon within the next few months. So please, it's only 20 bucks for a shirt. You know, you can skip. That's two days of Starbucks or, or three days maybe of Starbucks coffee. So you can skip that for three days and uh, buy a Joey Image shirt, please. Again, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Joey Image. I really can use the help. I got paid by them today. I got paid every first of the month. I appreciate my boy Jury, Justin Robert Young, buy a shirt. You guys have heard all those go home your drunk jokes. Well, that's the guy that invented that. He literally wrote the book, Go Home Santa You're Drunk. Justin Robert Young. Check him out on Twitter, actually. He's my boy, and I can plug him. Check him out on Twitter at Justin R. Young. Anyway. This has been That Image Guy, episode number 37. We are on location. That was a hell of a lot of lightning I just saw. Holy Christ. Have a good night, everyone. Have a great weekend, and enjoy WrestleMania on Sunday. Take care.